Hi, I'm Nick Butler, and I love beer. I love it so much that I've decided I want to start brewing my own, and I have no idea how to do it until right now. I have the help of Northern Brewers brewer, Brad Siegel, to help me. Why don't you come in, Brad? Hello, everybody. I'm Brad. Here at Northern Brewer, our goal is to provide you with everything you'd ever need, equipment, ingredients, to make the perfect batch of beer at home. And to that end, we introduce the Deluxe Brewing Starter Kit. And now with the help of a little movie magic, we're gonna show you exactly what this kit contains. Well, we got everything unpacked. Took a little while, there's a bunch of stuff in this kit, so. Yeah, I'm not, I'm not, not gonna lie, uh, there's a lot here. I'm a bit intimidated, but that's why you're here. Everything's got its use and I'll, I'll run that over for you. Great. One of the first things you're gonna take out of the box is the actual recipe kit. Now this has all the ingredients you're gonna need, all perfectly measured out, um, all the hops, all the yeast, everything that you're gonna need to make your first batch. And then over here we have the fermentation vessels, which are known as carboys. And then in the front here, what we have is all of our equipment for bottling the beer, temperature readings, for siphoning from one vessel to the other. We have a carboy brush, which you can stick in here and clean out your carboys. Mm -hmm. And we also have a bottle brush, so you can clean out your bottles when you're ready to package your beer. Airlocks and stoppers, this will keep uh, anything out while allowing CO2 to escape. And if you have a really vigorous fermentation, plugs right in the top, any foaming over is gonna be removed from the carboy and it won't blow your stopper out. Okay. This is the bottling bucket, so when the beer is finished, you're gonna put it in here. Mm -hmm. And with this and a couple other tools down here, we'll actually physically bottle the beer. And then once that's done, we have our capper and a package of bottle caps and a few other odds and ends, like a funnel, which is makes it much easier to get your liquid yes. into one of these. That's a, yeah, I, I that's a small to, little opening. Yeah, I wouldn't want to try to do that without a funnel. Right. Mm -hmm. And then the blue guy right there is actually a pretty handy tool. When you're done cleaning your carboy, flip it over and let it drain. Ah, perfect. There you have it. That's pretty much everything we're gonna need, um, other than a boil kettle, to get making some beer. All right, I think we should make some beer. Uh, let's do it. Yeah. Here we are, made it to the brew cave. Brew cave, brew time day. To, time to make beer. Very exciting. So let's fill this about halfway. This is a five gallon kettle, so we'll fill about two and a half gallons of water. All right. And we'll get it heating. All right, let's do it. All right, you got about two and a half gallons here. Perfect. Ready, ready to get it fired up? All right. Here we go. Fired up. All right, now just as a note, we are using a propane burner today. Um, using your stove top is perfectly acceptable. Unfortunately, we don't have one here, so we're using the propane. All right. Now we're gonna let this heat to 160 degrees. Got the, the included thermometer in the kit, so we'll just continue to monitor this until we hit about 160 degrees. All right. So now it's just time to wait. Okay. Maybe time for a beer, I don't know. I say yes. Okay, it's usually pretty early for a beer, but... Never too early. <sighs> it's the weekend. <laughs> Now, about how long is this going to take? Well, for brewing a batch like this, when you're doing uh, malt extract with specialty grains, to give yourself enough time, I'd budget about four hours out of a brew day. So, four hours. So yep, make sure your day is clear. Set aside a day. Exactly. Yeah, definitely. Exactly. <laughs> and, Don't uh, plan anything but yeah. brew day. So while we're waiting for it to heat, let's, uh, if you want to hold the bag, the bag open, yep. pour those right in there. Just tie Twist off. and tie it in and off. Yep, just tie off the end, uh, just so the grains don't come out. All right. All right, it looks like we're getting close here. It looks to be about 158. All right, so we drop it Let's in. Drop it in. Yeah, just, you just plop it right yep, in. Exactly. All right. Plop it kinda, right in. Kind of, you will want Just like a tea bag, yep. Just kind of steep it up and down. Steep and it up and down. Get that water to really wet the grains evenly and that'll, yep. that'll make sure we get all the flavors and colors out of it. All right. We've reached our 20 minutes. So we're gonna take that out. Yeah, I just let it let it drain a little bit yeah. to get all that goodness out of there so you know all that flavor is going into your beer and not into the waste basket. Yep. And so now the next step is we'll hit it with heat again. Yeah, we're gonna get this to a boil, right? Correct. Yeah. yeah. So, so now once again, we wait. Bringing it to a boil. That's right. All right, looks like it's boiling. So yep. the, the next step is to add the, the six pound uh, malt yep. syrup. Six pounds of the Pilsen malt syrup. Okay. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna kill the heat so we don't accidentally scorch any of this malt extract on right. the bottom of the kettle. Yeah. Cause that's gonna lead to some pretty bad flavors in your finished product and yeah. nobody likes that. Nope. Yeah. Faster, kind of a faster pace. Exactly. All right. It's just, uh, just to keep it from pooling on the bottom. Yep. So to get a good fast spinning motion going, it's gonna cause it to dissolve nice and quickly before it has a chance to settle to the bottom. 
Okay, there we go. All right, so after we're done that, the stirring, yeah, that's... Keep stirring for a little keep, bit longer okay. just to make sure. Sure. Uh, the specific recipe, the Chinook IPA, uh, also calls for one pound of dry malt extract. So the dry malt extract is essentially the same thing as the liquid, okay. but whereas the, the liquid malt extract has a, a decent amount of water still in it to make mm -hmm. it a syrup, this is fully dry. All the water's been removed, so it is a, a powder of malt sugars. It's going to raise what we call our specific gravity. So okay. it's going to add more sugars into the batch of beer. And, and generally speaking, the more sugars you have in any given fermentation, the higher the alcohol percentage is gonna be in the finished beer. I see. You're also gonna have more body, more flavor. Okay. And a bit higher alcohol. All right. So this particular recipe will come out to about five and a half percent. Okay. So right. a little low for an IPA, but man, that means you can have a few more. Yeah, well, that's always good. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so let's get this added in. Dry malt extract can be a little tricky. It tends to clump up pretty well. So this one you want to give a pretty decently vigorous stir. Okay. And add it slowly. If you, top, if you toss it all in at once, you're gonna have one big clump yeah. of extract. So nice slow addition is the way to go. All right, there we go. Now we're just gonna stir that for a little while longer just to make sure that any of these clumps are, are really well dissolved. Mm -hmm. That is looking good. Uh, smells great too. It, it smells great, it smells so good. Yeah. <laughs> And uh, now that we have all of our fermentable sugars in there, our malt extracts, um, this is what we call wort. Yes, the wort. The wort. So, okay. yep, that is the brewer's term for unfermented beer. Okay. And so now that we have all of our extracts turned back in, once again, we'll relight the flame and we'll heat it back up to boiling. Now again, we wait. What we're gonna do now is reduce heat, add the hops. Yep, exactly. So reduce the heat just a little bit. You still want to keep it boiling, uh, but if you have it boiling too vigorously and then you add hops, uh, it will have a tendency to create a lot of foam and, Bubble and yeah, boil over. Exactly. And if it boils over, it makes a huge mess, and it's it's it really stinks to clean that up. I'll let you do the honors. All right, great. And now it's time to grab the second bag of hops, and we are going to add that to the boil now. And by adding these hops later in the boil, what they're going to do is provide a bit less bitterness, and but they're gonna provide more of the flavor and hop aroma. So we're in the last minute of the boil. Right? Yep, we and are nearing one minute to go. That means round number three for the hops. Correct. Okay. We're on in. Open and dump it on in. Closer we have to our IPA. Done. There we go. One more minute. There we go. And by keeping the lid on here right now, we're just making sure that no uh, bacteria or yeast or anything floating around in the air gets into there and uh, infects our beer. So as that chills, uh, we'll get everything here clean. Um, <clears throat> Having everything clean is, it, it's, it's absolutely crucial to the success of your beer. Yeah. Uh, without properly cleaning your equipment, you're gonna possibly have some sort of microbial infection in your beer and then you're not gonna end up with a good product. Yeah. So what we're gonna use today is right there, it's called One Step. That's our cleanser. Okay. And what we do is we're going to prepare this at a rate of one gallon of water, which we've got here, to one tablespoon of the One Step. Okay. And so we'll mix that into a solution right here in our carboy. Pick this guy up and swirl it all swirl around. around. Okay. Make sure it's well dissolved. And then we'll just make sure it coats every surface. All right, and we'll do that a few times just to give us some time to make sure everything's perfectly cleaned. Okay. Now that we've let this sit for a couple minutes, we can be uh, very sure that this, this carboy is is well cleaned. So what we'll do is we can pour this then into the second carboy. We'll go right through the funnel and that will make sure the funnel is also clean. We just slosh that around here. Yep. So there's no need to rinse these out? Nope, this is a no rinse sanitizer. So okay. as long as you drain, uh, drain it out of the carboy you're gonna ferment in, no harm done. All right, that's easy enough. All right, we are ready now to get our wort into our six gallon carboy. Make sure that our measuring pitcher is clean. So let's give that a few swirls for a All minute right. or so. 
We can, uh, we can dump that, and then we'll fill. We'll get two gallons of uh, cold water into our fermenter. Just dump it on in. Mm-hmm. Another gallon. One more. It's time to add the work. Okay. All right, so we can just dump that in there. And uh, the trick to this is just, there's gonna be a bit of uh, solids on the bottom of the kettle due to the hops and uh, other proteins in the malt extract that have okay. precipitated out. So we'll just pour this in, trying to leave that, that uh, thick sludge in the bottom of the all kettle. Right. If some makes it into the fermenter, it's really not a big deal. We just all try right. to wanna not yes. get all of it in there. There we go. Starting to get a bit cloudy. Yeah, that's okay. You can get a little bit of stuff in there. Not gonna be the end of the world. I yep. think that's good. Yep. All right. And so the next step is to add just enough more water to bring it up to our five gallon mark. All right. And we're gonna want to be just about right here. That is pretty much perfect. Okay, now that we have our wort in the jug, we want to go ahead and sanitize our airlock and stopper. Soak our small goods. It, along with the yeast packet itself. The yeast packet just goes in. This goes right in. These are clean. Yep, those are all clean now. Right. So what we can do is pull the yeast and the scissors out. Okay. And what we'll do then is just snip open a corner of that yeast packet and we will pour it right into our carboy. And then we will go ahead and put our stopper on there. Just plug Add it. that in there. So what's gonna happen now is now that the yeast has been added to the wort, uh, this will start to ferment over the next 24 to 36 hours or so. Mm -hmm. And uh, what you're gonna see is a nice head of foam build up on top of the beer. And within about uh, one to two weeks, that head of foam will go back down. Okay. And now we can proceed to the next step. Okay. What we did here is we actually filled this with our cleansing solution. Mm -hmm. Otherwise you can use something like vodka or neutral grain spirits, just okay. something that's you know, not going to allow any growth of microbes. Okay. And one other handy tool we do include in the Deluxe uh, Brewer's Kit is a few of these stick-on thermometers, and that will tell you what your temperature is. In the case of this yeast that we use today, um, this ferments the best between 60 and 70 degrees to give us the, the, the best flavor profile. And so having the uh, thermometer on there will tell us exactly where we're at. And one big thing is you do want to keep UV light off of this. Okay. Uh, UV light will actually cause the beer to skunk. So just wrap that in something. You can wrap it can. in a towel okay. or, or put it in a dark closet, somewhere you know cool and dry, okay. and that will be great. Okay, so it's been 10 days. Yep. Uh, we have we have our uh, carboy here. It's really changed colors. And yes, it has. Yes, it has. We've got a ring of, of something around here. I'm not exactly sure what that is. Yep, so there's a bunch of kind of gunk around the top of the beer level inside the carboy here. Mm -hmm. And what that is, is from Croizen. Croizen. Yes, Croizen is the term for the head of foam that develops on top of a fermenting beer. Okay. And it will leave like a nice kind of like stain or it'll leave some gunk on the inside of the carboy. Okay. So and that's a good sign. That's a good thing. Yes, right, yes. Yeah. So if you don't see any Croizen ring or anything, um, then you know that yeah, fermentation probably hasn't yeah, happened properly. And uh, yeah, there's something gone wrong. Okay. So now that we've had it in here for about 10 days, um, it's mostly done fermenting. And so what we're going to do now is we're going to transfer it over into our five gallon carboy that comes in the deluxe brewing starter kit. We have previously cleaned our carboy. We have our Rack Magic siphon here in our handy dandy little pitcher of cleaning solution. We'll give that a few pumps and we'll get some uh, cleaning solution through there. There we go. It also works to rub a little bit on the outside just to make sure the outside of the siphon is clean as well. Okay. Now we will take the stopper and airlock off of here, put that into our cleaner, and insert the Rack Magic into the batch of fermented beer. And all we have to do is simply give it a few pumps 
and that will start the flow of the beer into our secondary vessel. All right. One tip when you are using the Rack Magic Siphon is to not put it all the way to the bottom of the carboy here, uh, because down here we have a lot of the yeast and other the, the coagulated proteins and hops and things that are left over from the boil. Right above that. All right, Nick, we are almost uh, completely transferred over into our secondary here. And uh, now that we're getting pretty low in this fermenter, it really helps to tilt it forward a little bit. That gets the beer level up towards the siphon and yep. kind of helps to uh, leave behind some of the crud on the bottom. All right. Now, since this is the Chinook IPA, we do call for one stage of what's called dry hopping. Uh, so we're gonna take an ounce of hops and add it into here, which is really gonna increase the aroma of the finished beer. Um, one note about these hops, they are no different than the hops we used in the boil. Okay. It's just the time we put them in. These. Perfect. And we got our clean stopper and airlock. Mm -hmm. And we're gonna put that on there and we're gonna let that rest for about another week. Another week. Another week. The first thing we wanna do during bottling day is as always, make sure everything is clean. Mm -hmm. So we've got our pitcher of cleaning solution. We've already pre-cleaned all of our bottles. Yep. Um, we've cleaned our bottling bucket. So everything's ready to go. Our siphon and our bottle filler are also clean. Mm -hmm. So we are pretty much ready to rock and roll. All right. Uh, so the first step in bottling is actually to prepare what we call a priming solution. We've got our handy little uh, hot plate here. We put about a pint of water in this kettle. And what we're gonna do then is stir in the priming sugar. We boil this water, we're gonna stir this in, and that uh, serves to both make sure the sugar is fully dissolved, and also it's hot enough to make sure everything is perfectly sanitary. All right. So, so priming is the act of dosing the beer back with a little bit of sugar, and that causes any residual yeast in suspension to re-ferment the sugar inside the sealed bottle, and that will create the carbonation. Okay. All right, great. So that boiled nicely for about two minutes there. We've turned the heat back off. And so now what we're gonna do is add the solution. We're gonna let it cool just for a few minutes. And in the meantime, we will prepare to siphon from our secondary, our dry hop Chinook IPA, mm -hmm. into the bottling bucket. And from there, we prepare for bottling. All right. We are ready now to siphon from our secondary, our dry hop secondary Chinook IPA right into our bottling bucket. So you can put that into our bucket. All right. And the function of putting this into the bucket first is that when you do siphon on top of it, it creates a nice convection, okay. which gets it all the mix. All right. And let's siphon. Give it a few pumps to start the flow. Cool. It's finally come down to it. We'll get the beer into the bottles all and right. let it carbonate. So we have our bottling wand in our cleaning solution. We've gotten that nice and clean. Here's our tubing, also been soaking in our cleaning solution. And so it's a pretty simple assembly here. Mm -hmm. Take the bottle filler, slide it into the tubing. Then we'll take the other end and slide it onto the cleaned bottling spigot. There we go. And pretty much it's as simple as opening the valve and depressing the bottle filler into the bottle. There we go. All right. All right, great, let's get that capped. So we got our caps in the cleaning solution. We've got our bottle capper. All what right. we're gonna do is go ahead and seal this bottle up. That's excellent. That's so a beer. That's, that's gonna be a beer. So All right. Now for a five gallon batch like this, you're going to repeat that process roughly 50, or so times, so you'll get over two cases of bottles from one five gallon batch. That's awesome. So you just keep doing that, keep filling, keep capping, and then once again, it's a waiting game. So okay. now that we've primed our beer with the sugar and we've gotten into the bottles and sealed them with caps, it's gonna take about one to two weeks for this beer to carbonate naturally in the bottle. So give it about one week, put it in a, you know, a cool, you know, about room temperature atmosphere, somewhere nice and dark and stable, let it sit for a week, crack a bottle to see if you've got carbonation, if you do, man, you're, you're off and running. Put, put them in the fridge. Put them in the fridge. And drink them at will. Okay. Well, Brad, I want to thank you for helping me along the process. Thank you, absolutely. My first brewing experience. I think it went well. I can't wait to try this. Perfect. Yeah, thanks well, so much. Only two more weeks. Yeah. <laughs> All right. <laughs> All right.
Hi there. So it's been two weeks and I finally have my chilled beer ready to sample, ready to give it a drink. So I'm gonna pop it open, test my beer for the very first time. Well, I had a really great time brewing my own beer with Northern Brewer. The process was simple from start to finish. I hope you have as much fun as I did brewing your own beer at home. Cheers and happy brewing.